Welcome back to the Michigan Business Beat, brought to you on the Michigan Business Network. Chris Holman here, and we are at the Mackinac Policy Conference on Mackinac Island. Hey, where else would you have that? Put on by the Detroit Regional Chamber of Commerce. And we have a very special guest today. Some of you may even recognize her, the governor of the great state of Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer. It's good to have you here, Governor. Thanks, Chris. It's good to be with you. It's always good. And what a beautiful day up here. It's unbelievable. It is the end of May, and it feels like it's July. How does this happen? This is Michigan, right? No, someone said, they, you know, gave me credit for it. I said, don't give me credit for it, because when it turns, then I'll get blamed for it. So. No, no, I, this part's yours. We're just this lucky to have yours. a beautiful week up here. You know, and, and it's a beautiful week anyway. I mean, even when the weather is bad, the networking that happens here, the things, the coalitions that come, your week has to be orchestrated to the minute, I it, would think. Yes, it's, you know, the great thing about this is you've got a concentration of stakeholders and leaders and electeds and media all together. And so it, you gotta make the most of it. And that means tight schedules so that you can have all the conversations because that's the, the beauty of this this week. No, you're absolutely right. And you, al you almost want to say, look, have the speakers, but spend less on them because everybody networks anyway. I think we've seen one speaker partially so far. That's all. Oh, really? Because we're so busy down here. I know. You're working. You're you working. Know. But, you know, I think whether it's Richard Florida or Liz Cheney or, you know, Pete Buttigieg, who was here last year, I mean, this is this draws real um, thinkers, real yeah. people who are getting things done. And that defines everyone who's up here. So where are we at on the budget? How are you feeling about that? I'm negotiating with the legislature. And you know, even though it's now a Democratic legislature, it's still the legislature. So um, they've, you know, we've got to find some common ground. I think we're largely aligned, but yeah. getting the budget finished in the next month is, is a high priority for all of us. We could be in a worse position. We've been in worse positions looking at budgets. No question. Right? No so question. And that's good. You know, we've, we've got resources. I think we've got a clear set of values and priorities, I think. Um, we just need to hammer it out, you know, these last few weeks. Well, and of course, we sit here all day long. You know, we're, we do like 40 interviews up here and from all walks. So we hear about everything that should be a priority. But one of the things that comes up year after year is education, mm -hmm. because that's our biggest investment in our future. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm really proud that we've been able to get a lot of you know, things done in education with the last legislature, Republican controlled, and I, we found common ground. We closed the gap between districts. We built equity on top with more resources for at risk and English language learners and kids with special needs. Um, we have obviously too had a pandemic, right? And so it's been a real setback for yeah. kids globally. Our focus is getting our kids back on track. And so I think the budget that I introduced reflects individualized tutoring and free meals, lunch and breakfast for all kids to destigmatize and make sure that those who are have food poverty um, don't worry about where their next meal is coming from, that they can focus on their schooling. So there's a lot more to do here, but I'm proud of the strides that we've made, and I'm confident this next budget will continue that. Well, I, I think you're absolutely right. And everybody, everybody knows the necessities that we have, right? So let's talk about entrepreneurialism. Let's talk about small business. Mm -hmm. And I know where you're at, but, but, but share some of that, because that... That is also tomorrow's employers. Absolutely. And part of, you know, the investment that we're making in our skills are really important. As I talk to small business owners, it's workforce. You know, I need employees. I need people to do the job. I need people who can afford to frequent my establishment as well, right? And so right. Um, as we think about Michigan for the next five years, 10 years, 30 years, we really have to be focused on making sure that Michigan remains a business-friendly state. We know that We've seen record numbers of people start small businesses in Michigan over the last couple of years. It's really exciting. But we also need to grow our population, and that's a, a bigger goal that we're setting here this week that we all have to be a part of because it's not just about growing one particular, you know, urban area of Michigan. This has got to be a statewide growth strategy, and that's why I love the power of AND because we all got to be a part of it. What's incredible is we've got to find somehow a more effective way to tell our story about what it's like to have a life here. Mm -hmm. uh, be, because when you when you think about it, I mean, the, the last campaign brought visitation dollars in. They left, they came back, hopefully. Yep. We're talking about coming here for the lifestyle that Michiganders appreciate, and not enough people know what that is. It's true. You know, Chris, I always say, have you ever met someone from Texas? 
All they do is brag about Texas. I don't care what their politics are. Yeah. They brag about Texas. One of the greatest things about Michiganers is we're humble. Yeah. But sometimes that humility doesn't work in our advantage because uh, people, I think, who know and love the state recognize the high quality of life, the low cost of living, the phenomenal universities, 21% of the world's fresh surface water. I mean, this is a unique place where you can live an incredible life. Uh, we got to get more comfortable telling that story, and I think you'll see a lot more aggressive work happening from the Pure Michigan campaign to um, the goals that we're setting in state government. MADC is doing a great job. I just want to put a pitch in for them, and I don't. Know, I know you don't need a pitch. <laughs> no, they are, and you know I've spent a lot of time with MADC. We pitch Michigan to a lot of companies. We've landed 16 billion dollars of investment over the last year and a half. Um, and telling the story and working close with MEDC, I think, is they really are a, a great asset of, of, that helps every one of us. Okay, what else? Are you going to make any major announcements up here? That you, Why you would up? I tell you? you? You'll tune out if I tell you everything no, right no. now, Chris. So I, I got to keep you paying attention. I follow you everywhere. You know that. <laughs> All right. Gretchen Whitmer, thank you so much thanks, for being Chris. here, and thanks for the great job you're doing thank for the you. state of Michigan. Good to see you. Good to see you. All right, you've been watching the Michigan Business Beat on the Michigan Business Network. I'm Chris Holman. We'll be back with more.